Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Celebrate Science 2013. I'm Ron Job, and it's my pleasure to be your MC this morning. Well, not only do we have two scientists with us, but we have a bevy of famous writers and talented individuals that are going to present to us. Superheroes are hugely popular in our culture now. They are pop culture icons. And I think we should be using pop culture icons when we can and if we have the inclination to help communicate science. I have this idea of saying, if I just throw out the idea, Batman, people have an image in their head right away of what that means. Now we can talk about the science of what that would really mean and challenge the idea and ask the question, could you really become Batman? What kind of training is required? What genetics are needed? What kind of nutrition? Working the night shift all the time, not getting any sleep. What happens to you after years and years and years of activity where you're constantly getting beat up every night? You have all these things where you can get all across an awful lot of science, life sciences of biology and kinesiology and neuroscience in particular. You're presenting it in a way, or I tried to present it in a way that was very accessible for people. We don't normally meet our illustrators. They, they often work in completely different parts of the world, and we just send things back and forth. So we've had a, an email acquaintance, but this is actually yeah. the first time we've met, so I'm really excited to be presenting <laughs> yeah. it here today. It's, it's really a thrill. We, you, you really do take your chances. The publisher hires somebody, and you really hope <laughs> that uh, you, you really hope that they can capture what it is that you've written and do justice to your words. Actually, the, you know, usually, uh, in particular, Ashley has, has been, and I'll tell you, our, our favorite illustrator of all the books that we've done. I'll give you an idea, this is spider webs. It's a really kind of fun little experiment, but you sort of got the horror from Igor, you know, some child who's, who's managed to get the, the spider web on, uh, on him. And, and what's really nice in all her illustrations is that girls are active participants. They're not just sitting there watching the boy character do it. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. And I thought, well, which art project have I done with my students where it was really successful? They really felt like this came out fabulously. And I remembered an art project I'd done where the perspective was looking up through the water at a silhouette. And I thought, that's my art. And when I go and work in classrooms and I present as an author, I tell the kids, I kind of wrote the book backwards because usually the writer writes the book, and then they pick the artist, and they don't meet. But I actually thought about the art first, and then I thought, okay, so if that's the art, what's the story going to be? So I thought about writing about the life cycle of a salmon. And I think for what I do, the questions I'm interested in, it's really more like being a detective. It's about trying to solve ecological mysteries. Why have stellar sea lions declined in Alaska? They're on the endangered species list. Well, here in BC, they're growing exponentially. Folks, a lot of our efforts on questions about diet. So how do you determine what a sea lion eats? And so now we've developed a whole line of research looking at collecting fecal samples. Now, there's a really gross out thing for any kid to imagine. <laughs> but even more exciting is how do you collect fecal samples? You, <laughs> that's right, you get to go ashore and try to be bigger than the bull. And these bulls are weighing over 2,000 pounds. We've got questions about, so how do you know where an animal is actually getting its food? So we thought some of that, and again, through trial and error, figure, well, one way would be to record the temperature in the stomach. Because in theory, when a sea lion eats a cold fish, its stomach temperature is going to drop. So there's an idea, so let's put a thermometer into the stomach of a sea lion. And it sends a radio signal to this backpack unit, which can then send a signal to a satellite, and now we know when a sea lion is eaten. And by the way, um, no sea lions were harmed in this. Uh, the sea lion is asleep, and uh, Russell pulled his arm out very quickly. Now we look at these guys here. These are my raw 10 dragons. So this is drawing us back into the math curriculum. So these raw 10 dragons, they appear in groups of 10. And as they appear in groups of 10, they tend to really mess things up in your house. 
we have ten sliding down the drain pipe, squooshing through the slime. All at once they shout out, it's party time. Then we have swimming in the toilet, splashing in the tub, 20 dragons sweetly sing rub-a-dub scrub. Well known for having written and published over 50 science books, his most recent title is Science Fun for Home and School. Gordon Gore is one of British Columbia's inspiring science educators. As a UBC alumnus, we want to recognize him for his dedication and contributions as a science educator and science writer. <laughs> it's called Before the World Was Ready. And it's about really new ideas in science and what happens when you're a little there a little before the world is ready for you. The first one chapter is about Copernicus and Galileo. Copernicus is the, not the first one who said the earth is not the center of the solar system, the sun is the center of it. Copernicus did the math endlessly. It was published as he was dying. A copy was rushed to him so he was able to touch his book that's explained this whole new idea about the universe, and then he died. I like people to understand that history and science are just two different ways of looking at the same thing. It's really gratifying to have, I think the fourth year now is understand, to have to celebrate science. This is one of the things that is core to our mission, is to engage people like you as partners to help uh, educate everybody, but particularly the youth. So it's, it's really great, and I really thank you for continuing to come to the Beatty Museum. Mm -hmm.